Hello, listeners. I'm Tim Stradamus, and it's Friday. And with me, as always, is my talented and beautiful co-hostess, Voice. Good morning, Tim Stradamus, and welcome to all listeners to Friday, where you don't work on Fridays. You just make appearances. <laughs> yes. Let's go with that. <laughs> Voice and I enjoy reading and talking about stories from the internet that are interesting, funny, and dramatic. Because of our love of stories, we've come together and created this channel to share with you those experiences. And hopefully give you some food for thought. Well... What brew have you made for me today? I have made you a green chai tea with a splash of milk. Oh, wow. That's really good. You like that? It's almost like hochata in my mouth. Oh, it's like cinnamon. It does. It's got cinnamon, cardamom. It's got a lot of spice in there. That's dangerous. It's that chai. Well, for any listeners wanting to follow along, all story links are in the description below. For our first story, am I the a-hole for being uncomfortable when my boyfriend's friend called me a bitch? All right, Friday. For context, I am a 31 female living with my boyfriend, Mike, who is 34. Mike has a friend, Victor, who comes over a lot. Yesterday, Victor came over to watch baseball with Mike. Victor asked me to pass him a beer, so I passed one over, but I dropped it. It didn't crack open or anything, but he said, nice one, bitch. I was honestly shocked and said, excuse me? He started laughing and Mike joined in. I was very uncomfortable and genuinely didn't know what to say. I told Mike that I didn't appreciate him calling me a bitch. He got super defensive and said he was saying it jokingly. I said it doesn't matter how you were saying it. I am uncomfortable. He got very huffy and said I was just being sensitive. And then he said, and you're probably going to accuse me of being a sexist now, aren't you? Can't say anything these days. This was wild because A, I didn't say anything about sexism and B, what do you mean can't say anything? Can't call women bitches? unsolicited anymore? What even was his point here? Mike hadn't said anything during this interaction until I called him out. I asked why he wasn't defending me and he said, I don't know, babe, you're being a bit dramatic. At this point, I'd had enough, so I told them to leave and they went to Victor's to watch the game. Up until this point, I thought I was in the right until Mike texted me angrily. He said I'd embarrassed him in front of a friend by being so melodramatic and SJY. He said Victor didn't mean any harm and it was like how my friends call me bitch lovingly slash jokingly. He also said it was uncalled for for me to kick him and Victor out of the house when Mike literally lives there. I said it's completely different because my friends make sure I'm okay with it and don't say it in a derogatory manner like Victor did. Plus, my friends are wonderful women who have supported me for years, not some friend of my boyfriend's who I barely know. And I was supposed to let myself be disrespected in my own home? He called me annoying again and then turned notifications off. He slept over last night. Victor lives alone and hasn't come home yet. I think I might be the a-hole because it's true that my friends call me bitch. And although it's different, as I said above, it's possible that it confused Victor and made him think that was okay. I also didn't mean to make Victor uncomfortable slash put out in the hot seat as a guest in my house. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Accidentally referred to Victor as Lucas. These are fake names and I changed my mind halfway through making the post, lol. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. Oh, this is a terrible way to start off Friday. No, you are not the a-hole. There is never an okay reason for someone to call you a bitch. I don't care what happened that he thought it was okay and light to do that to you. I don't see why you'd be in the wrong. You definitely need to take this as a sign though, because your boyfriend's trash too. If he thought that was acceptable for anyone to disrespect you in your guys' home, uh-uh. So understand what you're in because that doesn't get better. He sounds like he has zero respect for you and how you feel and think. Those people tend to not like evolve, <laughs> especially when they're trying to tell you that it's a joke. You're taking it that way. Like, so for you to have your boyfriend in the moment, someone drops something and then you say, nice one, what? That doesn't even sound good coming out of my mouth. And I'm not saying that to anyone. When would that be a joke? Maybe going, oh, nice one. You know, or fumble fingers or butter fingers or all the other fun jokes. That would have been preferable over what dick fingers did. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. So the fact that he accepts someone talking to you like that in your home, that I'm telling you, take that as a sign. His morals are terrible. Um, you're definitely not the a-hole OP. I would definitely rethink that relationship going forward. Never feel like it's okay for someone to disrespect you. I don't care if you and your friends who have rapport with each other talk to each other like that. That's something that you two, you guys have cultivated 
cultivated over time. And there's still respect even when that thing is being said. That's the difference. There is no respect in how that mer that person told you that. No, I don't believe that. Nor should you take it that way. He was looking at what he could get away with. And I'm sorry that you even had to feel like through his treatment of you that you are somehow the a-hole. That tells me a lot about that relationship and how manipulative he's been to you so far that you're willing to bend and go, yeah, you're right. Someone should call me a bitch in my own home for a mistake that happened. It's a joke. No, fuck that. Well, that was intense. I just don't like when people disrespect each other, man or woman. You shouldn't be doing that. I don't care who you are. It's, don't disrespect each other. It's one of the reasons why I love you so much. <laughs> we can have jokes, but that's not a joke. There's, there's a clear line in the sand. That ain't it. It is not. Well, the consensus on Reddit is the poster's not the a-hole at all. In fact, I have a one edit and an update for us. Oh, I look forward to this. So the edit was, oh my God, I was not expecting this to blow up like it did. I am so incredibly grateful for every single one of you who commented, and I feel so supported. It's impossible for me to respond to everyone, but know that I'm reading your comments and I'm so thankful. I'm working things out right now, but I am safe. Thank you so much for your concern. I'll add a longer explanation and update later today when everything gets settled. A lot has happened since I made this post, so I want to be able to update properly. Much love to you all. I am so overwhelmed with your kindness. Now, on to the update. This will probably be my final update considering the thread is now locked, which is sad. Firstly, thank you all so, so much for all the support. It means so much to me. I'm so overwhelmed reading all the comments telling me that I deserve better, that I haven't wasted my time with Mike, that I'm worth more. It truly means the world. Also, thanks to all the lovely PMs I've been receiving. Reading these comments have made me realize that I'm still young and have my life ahead of me, and I'm sure I don't want to spend it with a man like Mike, especially after what happened today. Today has been wild. To start, Mike didn't come home last night, meaning he has now spent two nights over there instead of confronting the issue like a mature adult. He didn't even text me to let me know that he was alive, so I texted him saying that I didn't appreciate at all what happened and that we should talk about it if there is any chance of saving this relationship. He sent me these wild paragraphs that basically said, fine, leave me, good luck finding someone else who will want to f*** you. You'll never find another man because you're just another annoying crazy bitch. Victor was right. You're a c etc. He basically typed an entire essay. It was pretty funny, but also disturbing. I couldn't believe a man I thought I loved was saying such nasty and disrespectful things to me. I texted back, lol, alright. Have fun calling me whatever the f*** you want with Victor. I won't be around to take it. We're done. His text truly was the last straw for me because he didn't apologize or even try to talk it out. He just immediately jumped to calling me names and saying really horrible things. I took my stuff, luckily it wasn't much to pack because all the furniture was Mike's, and drove to my sister's where I'm currently living with her and her girlfriend. I hope I can find a permanent living arrangement soon. Once again, thank you so much for all the support. I wouldn't have had the courage to end things without all the kind words and promises promises that things will get better and that I deserve more than this. I was scared to leave because, for some reason, people seem to think that women lose their value after turning 30. Looking back, Mike made this message clear to me as well during our relationship. I felt like I was undesirable because of my age and that I was lucky to even have a guy who could stand me. But reading your comments made me realize I'm still young and there's plenty of time to find someone who will treat me right. Again, I am so incredibly grateful from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Good guy, Reddit. Always on our side, that's for sure. Do not let other people determine your value. If someone is saying that kind of stuff to you in your personal life, that you have hit some fictitious wall, that you are now less valuable to other human beings, they're using it to manipulate you. Everybody is valuable, man or woman. Don't let other cowards control your life through their words. I can't stress that enough. You are worthy of being loved healthily. <laughs> <laughs> not with the way this kind of person is manipulating words to keep you in his vice. Truly, from the bottom of like our hearts, I think we think the same on this. Don't let your age determine how you let people treat you. Hands down, 100% agree, and we are on the same page. Get away from someone if they're speaking to you like that. Definitely.
there are a lot of good people out in the world. You just got to give them a chance. Yes. And I know that this is probably something that a lot of people don't say very often, but take the time to take a breather just for you. You'd be surprised when you bump into just the right person when you're not even looking for them. I was once told that because we spend so much of our lives trying to find the one or the perfect one, that we end up overlooking a lot of the valuable people that didn't seem to hit our expectations because we set them so ridiculous ridiculously high. A person isn't just a goal to get to. There's someone to grow with. And as long as you know that, the person that will be right by your side will be the right one. That's amazing advice. And and I think a lot of people need to hear that. It's not about what someone has or these requirements. It's if someone's willing to grow with you and you guys are willing to create and make a future together, that should be the most important thing when you're going into a relationship. When you and I met, we were very different people, but I'm happy with how you and I have grown together. You don't deserve to be disrespected. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. You deserve to be treated with respect and with love, especially from your partner. You need it. Well, let's go ahead and leave the situation behind and let's see what's happening with this wedding invitation. Oh boy. For our next story, would I be the a-hole for having a small please refrain from section on the back of a wedding invitation? I, 19 male, am planning to get married to my girlfriend, 18 female, later this year. Yes, I know it's young, but I'm not here to be judged for that. On to the issue. We've recently finished designing our wedding invitations, or at least a first draft sort of thing, and mutually decided that it would be a good idea to include a couple notes on the back about conduct. Two main factors play into this, one being the abundance of horror stories about people proposing or announcing their pregnancies at weddings, and the other being that her parents are abusive narcissists who've proven themselves untrustworthy and selfish throughout our relationship. At the bottom of the back side of the invite, we wrote something like, out of courtesy, please refrain from the following, marriage proposals or pregnancy announcements, excessive white or off-white attire, and photography during the ceremony. We'll have a photographer and phone photography is very obnoxious in this scenario. We felt that these were very reasonable rules, but upon showing the invitation to my mother, 60 female, she found it offensive and called it alienating and ungodly Christian household to have these guidelines. She says if she were one of the non-family recipients, she would consider not even coming due to just that. I pointed out that not coming in that scenario would mean that she doesn't agree with the rules, meaning we wouldn't want her to be there anyway. But she said it's not about the rules themselves, but about putting them on the invite this way. She feels that anyone that we are worried about as far as the above issues are concerned should be spoken to privately. But I would like to avoid singling anyone out, which is why I've also leaned against having two separate versions of the invite. Would I be the a-hole for including these guidelines? Feel free to ask for more information and thank you for reading. This is a cool story. All right, so let's see if I understand all the facts. OP is 19 and his bride-to-be is 18. Correct. Very young. Good for them. That's great. I don't really care when people get married what age. Um, Life happens. I'm happy for them. It sounds like (laughs) they've got some narcissists in the family and they know it. I think they said parents, right? Her parents. Her parents specifically. Now, OP's parent, a little older. I think they said his mother was 60. Correct. And he's... Almost 20. Yeah. So she had him probably 40s. Yeah. A little later in the game. Okay. So she's definitely... You can tell where her values are. And he does say it. Christian household, very religious. My wonder would be, because I don't see anything on that list being extreme. I think you're more than okay to ask people to not do certain things at your wedding. I have never heard of a wedding invitation coming with a don't do list. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But these, this is a different generation. I, I love that, that you can be set the expectations. Don't bring your crazy stuff to our wedding. I'm okay with that, honestly. I hope that they're not the a-hole because, yeah, I'm going to stick with my gut. I don't think OP is the a-hole. I I think it's a new age and that's great. Have a a don't-do list on the back of your wedding invitation. And he's right. If the people that read that and don't come, it's because it was about you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Tim Stradamus. Uh Uh-oh. Let me go ahead and let you know what the consensus is, and then we're going to dig right into it. Oh, no. So the consensus is they're the a-hole. Okay, what? Yeah, (laughs) they're the (laughs) a-hole. 
<laughs> and let me just start it this way. Oh, no. Let me start it with a joke from one of the commenters. Are you ready? Okay. Why did the narcissist cross the road? To get away from the bad wedding. They thought it was a boundary. <laughs> And that comes into another commenters, which goes ahead and breaks it down a little. They said, not shitting on someone's coffee table is common courtesy. Yes. But if someone comes over and you tell them don't shit on my coffee table, they're probably going to leave. Not because they so badly want to shit on your coffee table, but because you're treating them like they might shit on your coffee table. Okay. Like, just picture getting this invite. You, one, are a person old enough to receive wedding invitations, but who needs to be told these things and therefore probably won't follow those rules anyway. Two, are a person who does not need these rules, but are now alerted to the fact that this event is going to be full of cretins from point number one. Three, see that someone who knows you well enough to invite you to their wedding is treating you like a dumb child. Or of see, course- See, I wouldn't even have felt that way about it. I would have been like, yo, there's some people, like he alludes to one of the things. I'm like- You would be number two. One of the people oh, no, are hold here. Hold on, hold on. Before you continue, I think you fall into category four. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to continue. No, yeah. I feel, are you ready to hear category four? Okay. Or of course, number four, which is LOL, holy sh**, this is going to be hilarious. We're going to get stories out of this wedding for years, which is fun for guests, but probably shouldn't be a goal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for. <laughs> I wouldn't have seen that and been like, oh, I'm so offended at all these things. Why are you you talking to me like a child? I'd have been like, there's some children coming to this thing. Let's roll. Like, <laughs> I do look at life very differently <laughs> When it comes to this stuff, like, I'm very, I don't know. I, I understand from what they're saying, but I definitely, like, yeah, I would never have seen it as an attack on me because I know I'm not who that's speaking to. I would only get offended if I was like, oh, wait a second. I do these things. And I agree with that. I think it's more along the lines of you're essentially instigating these troublemakers to make trouble. You're giving them these ideas, right? <laughs> Announce your pregnancy at my wedding. Do a proposal Does that still happen? Right Is that a thing? You have, well, you and I haven't covered any stories like that before. I guess you'll just have to wait and see what I come up with. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad uh, Redditors have been able to properly give them some feedback regarding this. Sure. And hopefully they make the best decision for their wedding coming up. Leave it on there. You want that smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Take it off. You want a good wedding. <laughs> Let's go on to our next story regarding children. Am I the a-hole for calling out my brother's comments to my niece in front of all of his children? My 25 female brother, B, 39 male, came over to my mom's for his birthday last week. He brought over my sister-in-law, 36 female, and their three children, M, female 11, Z, female 9, and N, 3 male. I've done a whole buffet of food and had probably gone a bit over the top, but we don't see each other as often as I'd like, and it was a celebration. Everyone loved the food, and everyone ate their fill, but B kept calling out M. He kept making disapproving comments, telling her to slow down and asking her if she was going back for more. When she grabbed herself a second cupcake, he said, put that back, little piggy. She put it down and looked like she was going to cry. She then went and sat in the corner away from everyone and wouldn't really engage in anything after that. Despite me trying to get her to join in, B... Z and N all had multiple cupcakes, and it really bothered me he called M out. I put some leftovers into boxes for them to take home and told M that I'd put an extra cupcake in there for her. B's response was, she doesn't need it. Look at her, the little porker. M isn't fat. She's put on some weight recently, but in the way kids do before they have a massive growth spurt. I told B he was going to give her a complex, and I told him that comments like that lead to disorders. He said he was just looking out for his kids. I'm not a parent. I don't understand that he needs to teach them to be healthy. I said, as long as you have balance, you can eat like this sometimes. He looked uncomfortable and tried to lighten the mood with, well, at least she'd be skinny. And my response is the reason I think I am the a-hole. I said, yeah, maybe she'll be so skinny she'll be dead. Everyone went quiet, apart from my youngest two nibblings who were tormenting my cat under the table. They took their leftovers and went. B sent me a text later saying he was really mad about the way I handled things. I shouldn't have questioned his parenting and that he's considering if I should be at his wedding. My sister-in-law hasn't commented. 
and I've not responded to my brother. Mom thinks I was an a-hole, but my heart is in the right place. Note, my brother has never struggled with an eating disorder, whereas I've had troubles with eating since I was 12, so this is a sensitive subject. Am I the a-hole for calling him out like that? Nope. That's tragically bad, this story, because she's correct. I may not have had an eating disorder growing up, but I did have a grandmother that would chastise and harass one of my brothers every time he put anything near his mouth. It's horrific to be a part of that and to see it happen. I can only imagine the pain my brother had gone through for that, being teased about eating something or wanting to have a little bit more. That's hellacious. There's no excuse for it. There are ways to teach kids to be healthy and to have balance the way she's alluding to. It sounds like your brother really needs to go get himself into some type of counseling. So even though it sounds like he may not have had an ED, something's gone on that he thinks it's okay to speak to a child that way. You're setting the pace for the rest of her life, especially the beginning of it. If she starts making an unhealthy association with that food, the OP is right. Like you're heading down a bad road to have scolded her in front of everybody to the point where she puts it back and then she goes into a corner. I'm shocked that he had any presence of mind to think that he was right. And then he texts you afterwards to tell you how wrong you were. Where are you from? What made that okay? So OP, you're definitely not the a-hole. Look out for your niece because that's not okay. Well, all of Reddit also says that our poster is not the a-hole. In fact, they went ahead and they actually gave us an update inside the comments section. Let me go ahead and read that right now. Hopefully it's good. They said I'm rubbish at Reddit and I'm unsure how to post an actual update. I spoke to my sister-in-law this evening. She was present during the incident, but hadn't called B out when we were all together. I was super mad at her at first, but am not sure what goes on at her home. See later comments on my dad. Apparently, he's sleeping at a friend's house as she kicked him out last week until he can apologize to M. She won't accept him home unless she sees change. Not sure how this will work out. I'm going to speak to my brother at some point and explain to him from experience how comments like that caused my ED and try to help M so she doesn't end up in the same situation. Again, not sure how receptive to this he will be since he's chatting shit about me to his friends. Few comments. I 100% will be there for M and Z and N, all of them. I'm their aunt and love them so much. M and I have an auntie niece coffee date planned at the local cat cafe, and she knows she can message me and come stop over slash talk if needed. She has her own phone and her mom is on board for this. She also knows she can message me to come for a sleepover if it's not too much at home. Sister-in-law accepts that Z and N get more attention than M and has agreed I slash my mom will take Z and N once a month so that they can have some one-on-one -on -one time until they can all have similar amounts of attention. Z has lots of hospital appointments due to cancer and N has behavioral issues, which mean they get extra attention from sister-in-law versus M, who sometimes feels left behind. Responding the comments calling out my mom for not calling out the abuse, I'm not disagreeing, but I 90% blame my dad. He was the one making these comments when I was a kid, amongst worse comments and physical abuse. It took a lot for my mom to kick him out, but she managed, and I honestly think she was reverting to keep the peace mindset, because my brother is so much like my dad, it's kind of scary. Supporting sister-in-law here, no confirmation if he's done this to her, but we're there for her if it comes out. I've said to my sister-in-law if the wedding goes ahead, because after our talk and hearing her mindset, I'm unsure. Me being there is in question, but not due to my brother uninviting me, due to me being over our relationship. I don't feel like I can cut him off properly, because I don't want to lose my niece's nephew and sister-in-law, but I'm not invested in a relationship with him alone anymore unless he sorts himself out. Responding my dad, I'm no contact with my dad. If my brother continues this way, he's going to end up the same way with his kids too. Well, like I said, you sound like a good aunt. Sounds like you have a plan to stay in their life. Well, I know this family will definitely go ahead and sort it out with or without the brother. Let's go on to our next story involving service dogs. Am I the a-hole for not letting my friend bring his service dog over? Throw away. My male 39 friend, male 38, 
recently got a service dog. It's a diabetic alert dog. The issue arises in that he wants to bring it to my house when I host hangout slash parties. I'm not much of a dog person and really don't want it at my house. It is a breed that sheds and I don't want to have to deal with dog hair in my house. Also, my kids regularly play in our yard and I don't want them to encounter dog poop or pee. I've spent the last 10 years in this house turning it into a place my friends, family, and I could hang out. I have a pool. I built a bar in my basement those types of upgrades. I've offered to meet out at a restaurant or someone else's place and host less, but my house is the preferred destination among everyone else. I have amenities that others don't, and there are no expensive food and bar tabs at my place. I host a lot during football season and other major sporting events with some general hangouts in between. I told my friend that his dog wasn't welcome. I offered to pay for a monitoring device he can use while at my house, but he didn't take that offer well. Well, he let me know he wasn't happy and recently missed our Super Bowl get together. Am I the a hole? All right, so let's go on this journey. Let's see if I'm packed for it. Opie has a dope house and it's where all his friends want to come over and hang out to watch the game and just to kick it. Sounds like it's the preferred destination is what he says. He's 39, has kids, says some odd offhanded thing about the dog poo and pee. I've never heard that excuse before, but all right, I can get it. Says he doesn't want the dog in the house because it sheds. How much will a dog shed in a couple hours of hanging out? So his friend, 38, gets a service dog. He said it's a, a diabetic service dog? Correct. So it will alert him if his sugar levels are too low so that he can check and make sure that he takes his uh, That's really medicine. cool. So it sounds like it's important for him to keep living. Having all that being said, you are allowed to have your excuses because it sounds like he laid them out for his friend, but I don't see where there's any foundation to them. Is that really what keeps you from having your friend enjoy hanging out with everyone because his service dog needs to be around to help him live? You just sound like a very bad friend. Now, I understand if we're talking about if someone's allergic because we've had stories like that. If someone in the party or in the household is allergic to the dog, then yes, that's when I would say this story makes sense. But it just sounds like you didn't want to make any accommodations at all. And if it made any inconvenience towards your life, which would mean picking up poo or vacuuming up some dog hair that gets shed, then you're not going to have anything to do with it. And in that case, you are the a-hole. You are allowed to have your preferences, but when it comes into these type of situations where you're ostracizing someone for them when there's no good reason for it. That's the problem. And all of Reddit also believes with that viewpoint. And he was smacked with the resounding a-hole tag. Okay, I look forward to hearing it. Now, the best way that somebody equated it to was this is a medical assistance device, the service dog. Would you tell someone they couldn't bring their wheelchair because you didn't want the wheels tracking dirt on your floor? And that then, unfortunately, the poster said, Oh no, he responded? He responded. Oh, oh boo boo. Let me go ahead and get you the exact words that he responded with. He responded with, Someone in a wheelchair couldn't make it to my basement bar. So clearly, they are very much the ableist. They said, I don't have an elevator or ramp. I have stairs. Physically, someone in a wheelchair couldn't make it down there. And then you realize, I think, I think who you're dealing with. Yes, I think all of the commenters realized that this guy is he's, a shit face. Yeah, he's a he's, dunce. He's an absolute a hole. He's an ableist that he would prefer to not deal with other people's issues if they inconvenience him at all. How are you, thirty nine? And that type of mentality swims through your head. I was really upset when I read that, by the way. I can imagine. If that's your rebuttal to everyone, well, I wouldn't have a friend <laughs> that's not like that because I have stairs. What happened to you? Who hurt you, boo-boo? Now, you had a lot of people that said along the lines of no a-holes here because the situation, I mean, nobody technically wins in this case. You had other people that said that he's not the asshole because it, it is technically his, his house. Home. But a majority of people said he was the a-hole because his attitude wasn't to try and be accommodating. Well, I can imagine. It wasn't to try and be understanding of the situation. I mean, I would even say, hey, look, if you're coming to my house and you're bringing your dog, can you just make sure that you pick up, pick after, up him after him if he does? What is he thinking? Like his 
kids are waiting right by the poop chute to like hop into the crap the second the dog poops? They might. Like, what are you doing? You're just a really bad friend. And actually, there is a winner. It's your 38-year-old friend with his service dog knows that you're no longer a good friend. He can find other ones and move on with his life. Well, let's go ahead and leave this guy in the dust. And let's go on to our next story concerning a family dinner. Am I the a-hole for accepting the suggestion and not coming back ruined a family dinner? I'm known in the family to be a control freak about preparing food. In fact, in my family, there are two dinners in the year that all members come in all 30 people. And before I took over, all dinners were extremely late. There was always some problem with seasoning or poor preparation. I'm organized and for every meal, I have a spreadsheet with everything I need to make a huge scale dinner. At first, they didn't respect it. But after seeing that my method was useful, everyone joined in and allowed me to be the head of the organization. Since then, dinners are ready on time. Everyone praises and repeats the dish. Not very common. It's one to two days for preparing meals. I don't ask them to help me because I know I'm serious about organization. But if a person wants to, I ask them to respect the process. Another fact, my mom was a cook for a year and my sister-in-law is studying gastronomy. The situation. Sunday was the half yearly dinner and I was the head as usual. Would help me, my sister-in-law, mother, aunt, and uncle. This would be sister-in-law's first family dinner and she offered to help. During the preparation, my mom started to do several things wrong and every time I said something, she said something like, stay calm, a wrong thing will not lead to anything. The problem is that she did so much wrong, skipping so many necessary steps in the food that most things I had to redo or give a second look. She continued to help even though I said it wasn't necessary. I broke down when I just commented something about steps with my sister-in-law and she corrected me. I was going to comment, but my mother said, I think you better cool off in the pool and let those with experience sort it out. I accepted. I grabbed a glass of wine, the spreadsheet with me, and spent the whole day in the pool, ignoring when asked to come back. So, dinner was late, poorly seasoned, undercooked, and no one had a second dish. My mother later said that I ruined dinner and humiliated our family in front of relatives in revenge. I shouldn't take that serious because it was a silly family joke. By the way, I love making these dinners, and yes, my mother's sister-in-law behavior is common. Am I the a-hole? Someone asked for examples of what she did wrong. She put too much salt on one of the meats and it was inedible. There had to be 10 of something for the food and she cut it in half because it was too much. It wasn't. She started to make rice very early and we used the pan first for other food and the rice is last because it is the biggest and heaviest pan. My spreadsheet basically has the amounts and how long each cooking ingredient goes. I point out when they get the quantities wrong, too much or too little, or when they start making food that is for a long time before or after. Am I the a-hole? Let's go on this journey. This one's fun. So, Opie sounds really cool. It sounds like she has grabbed the bull by the horns and has wrangled in how to make perfect family meal gatherings work for everyone. That's great. Because if you've been a part of a big family or have had where you've had to put together big meals. It gets difficult when you're dealing with bigger portion sizes and having to make sure everything tastes the way it should, especially when you're cooking on a bigger scale. And you're talking about 30 plus people. So sounds like she was cooking and she's uh, what she says is she's taken over this a little bit ago. So it's been her show to run. So why did mother, when she's putting together this meal now, try to step in and take over the show when new sister-in-law is in town? Would you like to hear a theory? I want to say mine first. Okay. I think she's just trying to show who's still running the family. Because when you get into these big families, normally head chef is still in this world would be matriarch. People get very picky about that stuff, especially in bigger families. I could see it. I've been around these type of people. They need to let everyone know that when they're in the room, they're head honcho. It doesn't matter what you've done or who you are. You're based off your age is how they assess everything they do with you in your life. And if you're younger than them, you have no say. You even get to hear it in her, the mother's comeback. Why don't you let people with more experience that have done this cook, child? 
Oh, that's very true. She dunked on her in front of everyone, and I bet that happened in a kitchen full of people. Not on their own. She thought she was being funny and putting her daughter in her place in front of people. Your daughter's 24 at this point. She's been running the show without your help. You all of a sudden wanted to step in and... That's pretty disgusting. You got put in your place by your daughter. I don't think OP in any way is the a-hole in this situation. She did what she was told because her mother thought she was being right. She went over, she said she got herself a nice glass of wine, and she hopped in the pool for the rest of the day. Left them to their own devices. And guess what ended up happening? Guess we're going to McDonald's later. Yeah, chaos ensued. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Because it's been you that has changed those processes already. You showed off and you got your payment. I don't feel bad for your mother. Your family will undoubtedly know that it was your mother that screwed up. Because I'm telling you, everyone was probably in that room when she said that sly ass comment to you. Your mom owes you a deep apology and she needs to learn how to respect you. Well... I kind of know where your verdict is here. Yeah, she's definitely not the a-hole. And all of Reddit also agrees with that. The consensus is not the a-hole. In fact, you posed some really good points. Uh, I didn't quite read about the matriarch of the family, but what I did read was maybe the mother-in-law wanted the credit for the dinner. She got it. And then on top of that, was possibly embarrassed with the way that our poster is apparently a control freak and didn't want the sister-in-law, who is the new one, to come into the family to see the side. Now, is that the right way to go about things? Not even a little. This is the thing, though. ROP is open about how much she controls. From the beginning, she goes, my entire family knows that I am a control freak. They still embrace that and let her run the show her way because it got the results everyone wanted. So much so that they all started pitching in and and making sure that when they do pitch in, they know the level of game they need to bring their stuff up to to play with her, right? Because they could have told her at the door years ago, we don't want to do our family functions like this. They said, hell yes, you're taking over. We're here to say aye, aye, captain. (laughs) I'd be down. That's what happened. So for that type of thinking to go, well, she's doing it to protect her from seeing how control freakish she is. No, you should have just let her see the process and, and let her enjoy the art that's been created from the chaos of serving 30 people. The mother's out of touch. Oh, hands down. A lot of people in the comments section actually equated it to just bullying and they wanted to let people know bullying just doesn't happen when you're young. It also happens when you're older and within families. Sounds like mom just wanted to show everyone that she was still in control. Well, this family dinner got a little chaotic. So why don't we go ahead and see our next story's yogurt collection? Yogurt collection? That's right. For our last story, am I the a-hole for throwing away my boyfriend's potentially illegal yogurt collection? What is this story? You have a huge smile on your face. (laughs) (laughs) Try not to laugh while reading this one. (laughs) My cheeks hurt. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a 29 female. My boyfriend is a 30 male. We've been living together for two years in a little studio in a very expensive big U.S. city. My boyfriend grew up rurally with lots of space, enough to collect all kinds of things. He collected action figures and video games and all the normal kid stuff when he was young. But as he grew older, he became interested in more unusual things. As a teen, he had eight guinea pigs of different types from different breeders. Since Tide Pods was released seven years ago, he saved one of every kind of Tide Pod. He's got a big box of an international variety of electric insulators, those little ceramic hats that power lines wrap around on power poles. He's not a hoarder. He's usually neat, just used to having lots of space for his bizarro collections. At his parents' ranch, he has two big rooms full of containers of weird and impressive things. He recently became interested in yogurt. He's always hated dairy products until about a year ago. He's not just started drinking milk and sharing ice cream with me, but he's found a love of yogurts. So he now collects them, of course. The problem is that they're perishable. So until earlier today, our little 550 square foot studio contained about 2,100 cups of yogurt. It comes in tons of varieties, different types, flavors, textures, containers made by different companies in different countries. This is like a crack to my boyfriend. So he tried to pretty much save a sample of everything he could find. He filled our fridge, bought a new fridge, and then another tiny bedside fridge. He said he didn't want to walk to the fridge at night. 
but it was obviously a ruse to get more yogurt space. These fridges all filled up with his yogurts, and if you keep them for long, they smell bad. Sometimes the packaging breaks, so our apartment was smelling like rotten milk for the last two weeks. And my boyfriend's attitude was, oh, it's fine, and just deal with it for a little longer, until I pulled the plug and threw it all out this morning. I was looking at my groceries, which I had to put beside the fridge because there was no space, and everything smelled like death. And then I kind of snapped and threw it all away. My boyfriend is understandably upset. We've been arguing about whether I crossed a line by throwing away his stuff. And he's especially upset because he, of course, had rare yogurts that were hard to find. In particular, he had some Cuban and Iranian yogurts that you can't get in the U.S. But I know that we have trade sanctions against Iran and Cuba. So I don't know if it was even legal for him to have them. I asked where he got his Iranian yogurt and he kept insisting the Iranian yogurt is not the issue here and that the real issue was me throwing out his precious yogurts without his permission. Am I the a-hole here? Do I need legal advice? Thanks in advance. I'm so exasperated. (laughs) What the hell is this story? (laughs) What? The Iranian yogurt is not the issue here. (laughs) <laughs> How are you having this conversation with your loved one? You guys are in your 30s, right? They're living in a studio apartment, so it's already small. 550 square feet. It's already small. That's so tiny. And wait a second. He fills up one fridge, and his response to filling up one fridge is to buy a second fridge to fill up. And then when second fridge gets filled up, his next response for that is to buy a third mini fridge to put next to his bed so he can be closer to his yogurt collection. Yeah. And she accepted that from her partner. He is very lucky that she keeps dealing with that. And then it starts rotting. Ugh. Could you imagine? Like every once in a while, you'll forget something in the fridge and it'll take a turn. And you just kind of, when you come across it, gawk at its wonder of what it turned into. And then you throw it away because it's unsanitary and it can get you very sick. She says the whole apartment smells like death. I'm not sure how anyone could have dealt with that. So she dealing with it for two weeks till it started rotting. Good for you, I think. (laughs) Your understandable partner, that's good for you. But I think in this case, you're being a little too understanding. (laughs) There, There is a limit, I think. The fact that he's like, just deal with it for a little while longer. I don't care if they're from Iran or Cuba or if you got yogurt from space. 2,100 cups of yogurt. They counted them. That's what's crazy. To know that math. Oh, you yeah, sat there he probably counted. is like, I have 2,100 different types of yogurt from all over the world. The Iranian yogurt is the best. Take a look at it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> is this turning you on? <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? It smells like death. OP, you're not the a-hole. I would probably... I understand she says she's, he's not a hoarder, but there's something there. Because that sounds like hoarding to me. Even if you are neat... And she says it. He puts things in containers and stuff like that. But what's next? What other perishable thing will he be filling up? He bought two extra fridges to accommodate his collection. Fridges are not inexpensive. That's several thousand dollars most of the time. And you're in an expensive city. I'm thinking, based on the square footage, they're probably New York. Maybe. In my mind, that's what I'm thinking. Your New York is 550 square feet. Their studios are very small. You got to think they're paying, paying upwards to 3K plus, depending on the area. And they're then he purchases probably higher. a fridge and then a mini fridge and then all these yogurts. This story is ridiculous. Um, good for you for throwing it all away. Thank goodness you guys didn't catch anything. Mm-hmm. Because if, I'm telling you, it's gotten sick. unsanitary. You got these things growing. I believe he's definitely a hoarder. You're not the a-hole OP. Maybe go seek him some help, though. Well, the consensus is definitely not the a-hole. And everybody says when people put themselves as being a collector, they're essentially hoarders when you're at this extreme. Sure. On his parents' property, he had two rooms full of stuff. And it might be orderly and neat, but that doesn't stop what the issue is, which is you have a hoarding mentality. Most people can't even get their parents to let them have one room after they've moved out. Instead, he keeps two. Yeah. And then his own home full of fridges. Oh, my goodness. She let him do that. The (laughs) fact that he would not 
really get it. If I was in the apartment next to them smelling this, because it's a 550 square foot studio, so you have neighbors and you are inconveniencing them with this. One, I bet you the building that you're in probably thinks something's broken. Or dead. (laughs) <laughs> and they're trying to fix it because you know who's getting upset? All the other renters. And instead, it's this guy hoarding his yogurts. My mind can't compute how unnecessarily selfish that is. I look forward to hearing the comments. Oh, the comments get good. So you have someone who says, you know who loves yogurt? Terry. You know who doesn't hoard yogurt? Terry. If Terry doesn't hoard yogurt, neither should your boyfriend. <laughs> Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh, Terry. Yeah. yeah, cool. And then on top of that, you had somebody just go, cool, 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 <laughs> cool. <laughs> Everybody can't believe the amount of just yogurt that's in here. The comments get really funny. And like I said, someone actually said, the Iranian yogurt is not the issue here. I hope at some point in my life, I find a way to seamlessly drop that into conversation. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Apparently, this is actually very common to say inside a Reddit commenter's post in AITA because of this particular story. So if somebody ever runs into this comment inside of a comment section in another story, you'll know it was derived from this one from four years ago. Okay, this is a very old story. Four years. Very cool. Well, that's a fun story. Great way to end Friday. Well, as our stories come to a close, don't forget, you see in the world what you carry in your yogurt. <laughs> If you have enjoyed listening to us read and talk about today's stories, please rate, subscribe, and turn on notifications for new content. We are regularly posting on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We're lame. We're funny. Well, I always say it on Fridays. Let us know what your weekend plans are. We always look forward to hearing them. Also, tell us what your favorite yogurt flavor is. Yogurt Land. Oh, I love Yogurt Land. And remember, if you post it, maybe we'll see it on the internet.